Remember Matt Mitchell? Well, back in September 2013, the New Zealand grinder was banned for the first four America's Cup races by the international jury, who found him and other Oracle team members guilty of gross misconduct for allegedly altering the AC45s used to win the last two World Series titles in June-July 2012. Now, 16 months later, the International Sailing Federation's Disciplinary Commission has ruled the case is closed. The panel has decided it would be inappropriate to recommence a fresh hearing into this unfortunate episode so long after the event. Matt Mitchell joins us now on The Good Chaps. Good evening, Matt. Hey, Brenton. All good? Very good, mate. You must be relieved the saga is finally over. Yeah, I mean, that, that chapter's closed and we're, we're opening the next one, if you like. We're sort of going on the offensive to um, right the wrongs. Yeah, we'll go into a few details about that shortly, but how much has this, over the last 16 months, damaged your sailing career? Oh, mate, it's been brutal. It's just been absolutely brutal. You know, you've, you've put a lot of effort into these campaigns and over the years and to have it all torn down by one bloke just not putting his hand up for something he's done is, is bloody tough. But um, we look forward to the next few months when we get to uh, bring all that out. Have you still a job in the industry? Uh, no, no. And what's your job prospects going forward? Oh, you, you never say never, and it's still fairly early days. But, you know, there, there's various factors that have contributed to that, not not just this, but... Um, having the whole stigma of it hasn't been a positive on the employment front, that's for sure. The decision by ISAF, the Disciplinary Commission, do you now feel exonerated, though? Oh, yes and no. They they sort of didn't want to touch it, really. They wanted the whole thing to go away. Um, they've given me a, a decision of no breach. They stopped short of making a finding, so they didn't have to scrutinise the behaviour of the America's Cup International Jury. So... Um, it's a wee bit disappointing, but predictable given the people involved. Yes, and you've touched on it just before that you're going on the offensive. Uh, what exactly has made you accuse your ex-teammate Simeon Timpont, the Dutchman, of cheating? Well, the fact that he admitted doing it. He's, he's the man on the sailing team, the only man on the sailing team at Oracle that they actually had any evidence for. And uh, he didn't get put in the hot seat, so that's a problem. And... Um, yeah, I got I got slotted in there instead, unbeknownst to me at the time. So it was a fairly fairly thorough and solid stitch up, and uh, that just doesn't sit too well with me. So it's time to sort that out. Yeah, well, you you feel that you were made the fall guy for this this whole fiasco? Oh, there's no question, mate. I just didn't do the stuff they said I'd done, and and it was only his lies that that implicated me in any way. So it's um yeah, it's just about standing up for yourself, you know, and sorting these sorts of things out. What can you do? Oh, well, the first shot we've fired is, is at, I, you know, at Simeon yesterday. We've ruled 69 them, so that's an official complaint back with ISAF. That's, an, uh, that's a complaint of gross misconduct against Simeon for deliberately breaking a racing rule and also lying to a hearing. So that's the start. Um, our prediction is ISAF will do very little. They'll try and find an excuse and a way to get out of it. So once again, they don't have to scrutinise... Uh, the process and behaviour of some of their members. Yeah, are you alone here? Do you have any support in this case? Oh, I've got my council here in New Zealand who have just been wonderful. They've been amazing. And so uh, we're just, we've been blazing away at it. We've been very patient. Obviously waiting 16 months to, to get your turn and have your say and um, start to, to sort of reveal the truth. It's been difficult to wait that long, but it's, it's been worth the wait, you know, because we've amassed an awful lot of evidence and... Uh, Kind of, it's, it's very satisfying to be able to start to present some of that. Do you feel now is only when the public's getting to find out the true story behind what happened back, or what came out anyway in September 2013? Yeah, no question, no question. And hopefully, hopefully ISAF do the right thing. I mean, that's their job is to adjudicate the sport and do the right thing. But unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of politics and a lot of manoeuvring involved, and that's what created this mess in the first place. And... Um, it's hard to see too much changing, but that's why we've we've made our uh, complaint fairly public so the world can see that we've asked the question and now ISAF have got to answer it with the world watching. And are you still continuing with legal action against Oracle? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's kind of on another front, really. That they We felt they were obliged to, to continue to pay for 
my defence of the allegations, and uh, they obviously disagree. So that turned into a, uh, a proceeding being filed in the Californian Employment Court. And so waiting for a resolution to that? Yeah, those wheels turn pretty slowly, mate. So, um, yep, you've just got to chip away at that one there, but I've got a good man over there helping me with it. So, uh, yeah, we'll just continue to, to blaze away at that. You seem pretty determined to, like you say, get on the offensive. Is any part of you thinking, you know, maybe I should should just give up and, and try and get on with my sailing career? Uh, no, no, not one part, mate. My mum passed away last year and I told her I'd sort it out. So I'll, uh, I'll, I will sort it out. How long do you think this will take? Uh, it doesn't really matter to me how long it takes. As long as, as long as we end up with the right result, ultimately, that's why we've waited this long now to, to make sure we got the, you know, the, the truth revealed by, first of all, the Yachting New Zealand commissioners, who did a wonderful job, by the way. Um, and, you know, they did a great job with their report. We, were, we sat with them and sort of just said, if you make a decision, could you please just give us the reasons why and expected a couple of paragraphs. And those guys gave us 26 pages, which was amazing. And then, uh, then we started the dance with ISAF, who are a slightly different bunch, and um, again had to be patient, and uh, and you know sort of got the right result from them, in some respects. So that's good, you know. We're sort of all clear of those those people now, and we can sort of go on, like I said before, on the attack. You mentioned the Yachting New Zealand report. Can they help you in any way? Uh, possibly. I've sort of been in touch with them a wee bit, but to be honest, I'd prefer to do it on a, on a slightly more personal level because it just I think it just makes the whole thing a little more legitimate and authentic from my position, you know? Ultimately, can you, I suppose, have any way in overturning what happened um, in the uh, America's Cup? You can't Cup? change the penalty. Obviously, that's happened, and you can't. You know, you can't go back in time and, and change what's happened, but hopefully we can um, we can just get the story told how it should have been. And, and the and the guy that actually did the job, who said he did the job, should be uh, duly penalised for it. You know, this guy said he did it, and nothing's happened to him. You know, he's walked free. He went and sailed in the America's Cup, man. We've seen. And the... now he's now he's he, he he sailed in the America's Cup, then became Dutch Sailor of the Year, and now he's on a pretty good deal at Luna Rossa. So how does that work? Yeah, and in contrast, you obviously not just denied the the first four America's Cup races, but you didn't get to compete on the boat in the end, denied that chance, and look at where you're at at the moment. Obviously, you can't be too happy with how this has worked out. That's not the only factor in those circumstances, or the only only thing going on there, but um, it certainly hasn't helped Brenton. You know, um, he's just sailed along his merry way, and um, after throwing a couple of knives in someone's back, and, and that just doesn't sit quite right with me. Where does Dirk DeRitter fit in this? He's had his three-year ban reduced to 18 months now by the Court of Arbitration for Sports, so that is, is pretty much over as well. How does he fit into this, I suppose, this mess, really? Yeah, yeah, I think he still sort of harbours hopes of being able to take it a wee bit further in the New York courts as far as the jury's behaviour is concerned. I, I'm not completely sure. I mean, our... Our circumstances are vastly different to Cheezers, and, um, you know, we've tried to... As, as, even though they're related, we've tried to uh, sort of keep them separate and, um, yeah, just keep blazing away, you know, on our own front. All right, so I suppose now where you go to from here, right now, uh, what is the, the next step for you in this case? Yeah, well, the next step is, is sort of wait and see what ISAF does, which will be, you know, we expect nothing. Um they should do something, and maybe they'll maybe they'll sort of do the job they're supposed to and do something, but time will tell. So we're sort of it's a bit of a waiting game now, and then we've also got some recourse as far as the jurors are concerned, and we're just considering what that will be in the next week or two. Well, fantastic! Thank you very much for joining us, Matt. We wish you all the best uh, with this endeavour, and hope that you do get the resolution you're after.